I know better what you need. If you don't play with me, then I won't be friends with you. That's it, I'm here as a maid, no one even noticed me. Mom took care of you all her life. Mom won't wish you any harm. Listen to mom. We take such a good care of her, and she behaves like this. Don't I know what my mom needs? What happens when the husband does not answer the phone, and he comes home in the evening? What has happened? I haven't been able to reach you for half a day. I'm worried. Where are you? And then a person wonders, where is manipulation in my life? I don't want anything from anyone at all. They are trying to become more virtuous than the one who manipulates them, who creates this manipulation. It is impossible. True freedom is to become simply unavailable. Yes, unavailable for manipulation. This is the answer to the question, how can I get rid of manipulation? Good afternoon, dear friends. Hello, Diana. Hello. Diana, today I would like to talk about manipulation. Since we have talked about this topic quite often in our programs. But nevertheless, we have received a question from one of our viewers. Can you tell what manipulation is, please? How is it expressed? How not to give in to manipulation? In general, I propose to talk about this today. And those who are watching us for the first time, guys, I will explain that in this episode you will hear the definition of what manipulation is, how it works, what types of manipulation there are, how not to fall for them. Well, and most interestingly, you will learn a new approach to human relationships based on the original knowledge set out in the books of Anastasia Novik and programs with Igor Mihalovich Danilov. Well, I suggest we begin. Let's start with the first question. What is manipulation? Manipulation is an attempt to dictate to another person how to act and how to treat something. In fact, any person can independently decide this question and, in fact, it is the responsibility of a person. But the manipulator believes that he has the right to impose his opinion, his decision, his point of view on another person. That is, it is always a position of superiority. I know better what you need. So, what becomes clear? And what, from my point of view, is important to understand for any person who faces manipulation in his life is that, unfortunately, the reality is that every person in our life faces manipulation. Either he is manipulated or he becomes an object of manipulation. That is, it is when someone imposes their desires on you, you could say their will, their point of view, and so on and so forth whatever closest. You know, another important thing to understand and something that people are interested in is what kinds of manipulation are there. And very often we come across the fact that, let's say, offense, flattery or accusations are voiced. And we have a separate issue on guilt, where we talked to you and dealt with different life situations. A person is surprised. Come on, really? Is it manipulation? Well, everybody can understand resentment or relationships. You do this for me and I do that for you. Or, you know, these patterns of behavior from childhood. If you don't play with me, I won't be friends with you. I mean, they are learned by people, and people can still identify them. But other techniques, such as caring, for example, are really surprising for many people. Wait a minute, what does caring have to do with manipulation, and what can caring have in common with manipulation? Caring can be called a manifestation of love, 
But is it? Caring is indeed a manifestation of love, but caring is also a form of manipulation. And you are right, very often people sincerely believe that they care and don't realize that they are actually manipulating another person at that moment. Let's just look at this as an example, and then I think it will become clear to everyone. The son comes back from the institute. His mom came up to him. Son, are you going to eat? No, mom, not now. I'm busy. I'm in a hurry. Well, it's warm. I have just cooked it. Mom, there is no time now. Let's do it later. I thought you'd come and hurry to cook. I hoped you'd eat. All right, fine. That's it. Mom upset. She's going to the kitchen, isn't she? The son sits down. That's it. He's already pushed the laptop away. He can't find a place for himself. He jumps up and runs after his mom to the kitchen. Mom, wait. What have you got here? Quickly, really. I'm in a hurry. Mom smiles uh, and starts setting the table. The son swallows his lunch quickly, doesn't finish it, jumps up, runs to change his clothes because he's obviously in a hurry. That's it. The door slams behind him. Where are you coming back? Mom, I don't know. That's it, the sun's gone, the door closed. So the question is, is that caring? Well, let's just imagine how the sun feels. What was his mood? He was obvious, in a hurry. It was of, well, let's imagine. It is easy to imagine the state of mind when we have eaten a meal in a hurry and we are still running to some some meeting. He popped home in it to change his clothes and get ready for the meeting that was important to him. That's all he had time for. Well, imagine the state in which he runs, late for a meeting, in a flood of thoughts of gratitude in quotes to mom's care. And what's, what about mom? The door closed and the mom went to the kitchen to the table with untidy dishes, to the thoughts that, well, everything is the same as always, everyone he has his own life. Didn't even say thank you. Didn't even say thank you. Maybe he did. You understand it? Maybe yes, maybe the said. Thoughts in which mom is, that's it, on this, nobody even noticed me, that's mom's state of mind. Are one of and the other happy about this case. And really here I want to talk about it because, as I said, there are so many people who genuinely believe that they care, don't understand why there is such a reaction. They don't understand why the state of caring is so devastating to them, causing them so many unpleasant emotions, unpleasant the emotions in those they care about. It's necessary to distinguish between genuine care and manipulative care. Sincere, true care differs from manipulative care, but the fact that sincere care implies no expectations of what a person should do. There is no certain, you know, picture of certain how a person should react to the fact that I took care of him or her. Why? Because sincere care is a desire to do something good for another person. Yet it's not even a desire, it's a need to do something good for another person. And this need is always born in a state of love. Which you said at the beginning, that I already enjoy the state. It is self-sufficient. There is no expectation in love. I already enjoy the state. I share it. And I care. And care is one of the manifestations of love. And when such care manifested, when it is born from such a state, then there are no offense, no claims, no frustrations, none of that. Well, even if mom decided to take care, to cook dinner, or it is her functional duty, which she agreed with, or she simply decided to please her relatives, husband, children, well, I made a meal, my son came home from school, and I offered him lunch. No means no, I offered the ones, yes, that's it. Lunch is on a table or in the fridge, if you want to eat it, you just go and do it. That's it. And no conflict, no resentment, no guilt tripping, no judging the son for being ungrateful. It's the same as always, no judgment of his 
uh, I'm just full like lie on a couch, watch my favorite TV show or read my book, I don't know. I could go to spa instead of doing something for this ungrateful people. That's it, true care. Yeah, you know, that's a good point about having expectations and the complaints that people have when those expectations are not met. But here's another interesting thing. We have just described this situation, and I understand that we come back to the point of honesty. Today, people do not have honesty in their relationships. But there is self-interest. There is a desire to insist on one's own way of doing things. And do you know why people are surprised that caring is also a way of manipulation? Because through caring, people try to fulfill their desires, their aspirations to control another person. Let's take another common situation. An acquaintance of mine has a mother-in-law, a great woman. I know her personally. She is very interesting, very intelligent in communication and really caring. She has always taken care of her children. The kids have grown up now, all of them are actually 40 plus. And she continues to take care of them. That is, she gives some advice, she helps in some way, she can come to look after her grandchildren, she can do something else. I've witnessed more than once a situation where, really, you're looking from the outside at a normal parent-child relationship. I mean, children across generations, right? And grandchildren included. There was some family discussion. They were discussing some situation that didn't really concern the family directly. Someone was having problems at work. And my friend's mother-in-law, listening to all this, said, No, I understand, of course, you are adults, you can do as you want, as you know, but listen to mom. Listen, mom knows, do it like this. That's it, this phrase is just uttered, and then the discussion goes on again. It is clear that no one is content with mom's point of view or proposal, Everyone understands that mom is not a professional in this area, even despite all her life baggage and so on. But mom again joins the conversation and says, No, well, guys, I understand that you can do what you want, but look, how many years I've been taking care of you, I've been helping you for how many years? Listen to your mom. And you know, it's really gentle, do as I tell you. When people are absolutely adequate, they say, Okay, mom, explain why we need to do it this way. Well, that's just the way I see it. Okay, well, thank you. You've shared your point of view. Here's the situation. It is clear that this position of my friend's mother-in-law continued throughout the conversation. The conversation went on for about an hour, and the person from time to time, but nevertheless, came up with the same idea. Mom has taken care of you all your life. Mom will not wish you bad things. Listen to your mom. Mom knows best. That's why I was talking about its position. And here you say people are surprised that there could be... Well, people not just surprised, they feel indignant. How? A mom can only be caring because moms always want only the best. Moms? Yes. But you said that it has a consciousness. And our consciousness is such a real manipulator, which very easily turns any desire, aspiration of a person to do something good into manipulation.
So, mom, yes, she does truly, sincerely want the best for her children. She really sincerely wants to take care of them. But controlled by her consciousness, mom starts to manipulate with maternal care specifically. That is, the consciousness actually manipulates the mother and makes her act in the way we have just told you about, in the first case and in the second case. You know what is also important to say, so that our viewers don't get the impression that if the way of manipulating a person is caring, it's only in some parental relationships, mom, dad and so on. No, in fact, this technique is used by everyone, it's common enough and it's just plain sharing. Suddenly, out of the blue, your colleague writes to you and asks how you are doing, how your health is. Well, this is also a rather popular situation, when someone has traveled somewhere, or someone has come from somewhere. Oh hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Was everything okay out there? And stuff like that. And so it's, you know, it's just natural communication, it's politeness. Why can't I ask my mate how he is doing? Does he take care of his health? Has he done so? Has he been to the doctor? Because in my circle of communication that goes through often enough. And then you realize that the person is in this momentary caring for his companion, for his colleague because he is trying to earn himself bonuses. I wondered, as you see, I'm not like them, I'm not a trivial person, take a closer look at me, listen to me, maybe I'll give you some sound advice, as they say. Oh, that's what fairy tales used to be like, maybe you could use me somewhere. I care about you. Yes, and maybe I can use you somewhere too, life will show. So we prolong the hook on which we fix a person. Because you really falsely start to believe that this person cares about me. Yes, he really does. He cares about me. So maybe I should listen to his opinion. And why is that? Because it's for a reason. This person, he shows a special concern for me, he already comes special. Now this manipulation called I care about you, it puts the, in the it was the caring person in the position of a special importance, doesn't it? I would also like to share an example and an observation that is also very common in families. Now, a great number of people are forced to leave their home, their country, because the climate has destroyed their home, because there is a war going on in their country, where people live, hunger or economic crisis. And of course, we see how many people need health care today. And indeed, it is very important for us to learn how to properly support each other and how to properly care for each other. Here are examples that I observed. When the war started in Ukraine from the first days, they tried to evacuate women, children and elderly. And the elderly. And the first to leave were, of course, people who had a place to go, who had their relatives in Europe. And so, once the fellow decided to evacuate the grandmother, grandmother, 83 years old. I'm talking about one such family. There were many examples of this. I'm just saying again, I'm describing a standard situation which I have observed many times. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. For me, because it was a really common situation, and you can understand people, it's normal. They worry about the life of their loved ones. But to take an elderly person out of the house, I remember the expression. It is not an easy job to drag a hippopotamus out of the swamp. Not because it's heavy, because it lives there. On the one hand, it seems to be the right step, a normal step. But on the other hand, anyway, sorry for interrupting, I wonder what consequences people had to face afterwards. 
No, you specified everything correctly, Sasha. Grandma was crying. Grandma was resisting as hard as she could. She was begging, please leave me here. I don't need to go anywhere. Let it be what it will be. My husband is buried here. My parents, my brother, my friends I grew up here and raised my children here. My life is over here. I don't want anything anymore. Moreover, her son remained on the territory of Ukraine and she want, was naturally worried about him. But can a daughter allow her mom to stay in a territory where there is a war going on? No, of course not. You're, you're right. And people, all of them. The decision was made despite the grandmother's resistance. Grandma was evacuated, but with a warning and not to take anything extra. A small purse. Everything we need. We'll buy everything here. Here are medicines for the road and nothing else. That's how it was done. It must have been three or four months past. And then I got a call. Help, there is something wrong with our grandmother. I don't know whether she going crazy or whether she can cope with the stress of the road or moving in general. She had she had become close. She sits in her room, doesn't go away, won't communicate with people. She started to eat badly. She cries. She keeps asking to be returned to Ukraine. She doesn't want to wear clothes that we bought. She asked to have her things sent to her. Well, who will deal with these things? Well, doctor will explain what to do. Should we talk her to a psychiatrist? Should we take her to a psychiatrist? We talk, though not to the grandmother, but to her daughter. And I suggested to the granddaughter, a grown-up girl, I said, take your grandmother, go with her to the shop and let the grandmother choose what she wants to wear, buy something for herself. The granddaughter agreed. Here they call back in three days, she says, well, grandma, of course, uh, was tired when we went shopping, but she came back satisfied. Today she even asked, take me with you to the grocery shop, let's go together and pick out something for dinner. And she's already putting on this new jacket she chose for herself. All in all, grandmother's feeling better. The daughter, of course, was outraged. How? would take such a good care of her here and she behaved like this don't i know what my mom needs did i buy bad things well good things of course you know what your mom needs but your mom is not a thing grandmother's 83 years old she's born over a lifetime such as table patterns daily routines what she needs to wear and what she's comfortable in and what she's not that's how she sees herself and so on. Yet, really stressful for her to change her whole environment. And we know how much stress it is always for the elderly. Everybody knows that they have a much harder time with it than any, than any other circumstances. Well, just try to be respectful and understanding of of what your grandmother is going through. Ask her what she wants. Oh, well, I was in this situation, and in similar ones, I recalled a very interesting study that was carried out in a home of elderly people living alone, where they were observed. One part of this... Uh, what was the study consist of? One part of this uh, residence, let's say, lived on the ground floor, and the staff did everything for them, made their beds, cleaned their rooms, helped them to take a shower, picked out the clothes, determined what they would want to eat, determined what they would eat, and that is the menu for each day. Well, everything absolutely, so, you know, complete, meticulous care of a person. And the second part, those who live on the second floor, they, on the contrary, did everything themselves as much as possible. They did their own cleaning as they could, they looked after their own clothes and decided what they want, uh, would eat today. If they wanted, they could cook something for themselves. In other words, they did everything they could on their own. And there were very interesting observations. Those who were cared for in this way, practically getting rid of any actions, any independence, so these elderly people, they felt very bad, they were very ill. They were very often ill, they were depressed, and those people who did everything on their own, despite the fact that they were elderly, someone with a stick, someone with 
joint pain, someone with heart problems in its matter that as much as they could on their own, they felt a lot better. They were in a good mood, they were both in physically and mentally is much better condition than those who were immersed in the state of helplessness. That is, if we come back to what true care is, it still involves taking into account what the person really wants, what his or her needs are, that is, it impacts for the needs of the person. I understand if there was such an option, we took grandmother and gave her clothes, um, what is in the house, that's all, there is no other option, so to speak, but if there is still this option, if you go to buy clothes for your grandmother, ask her, take her with you, take into account that this is still a person who has his own views, her own needs, you know, I realized that what might sound like, let her be generally happy that she is alive, that she has a place to sleep and something to eat, right? Normally it is so, but I'm seeing once again, in each of us, there is such a lives a dictator, a manipulator called consciousness, which will never allow any person in any situation to be satisfied with whatever he or she has. Such a manipulator is in that the same manipulator dictator lives in the daughter who knows better what is needed for her mom. And that's what you have to take into account. I will remind our viewers that we consider all the issues and topics in our problems from the position of knowledge about the dual nature of a human. This knowledge has already been with people. It is the basis of any spiritual tradition, any religion, but I would say that today that they are available in the books by Anastasia Novik and in the videos with Igor Mikhailovich Danilov as an undistorted, understandable, for everyone form. And so, based on this knowledge of the dual nature of a human, in each person there is a spiritual component of the soul and personality. True a person, what each of us really is, an animal component, body and consciousness, and the consciousness of a human is a part of a single mind, which is controlled by Satan. That is just this ironic part in each of us and images and thoughts that we hear in our head, see, observe in our head and used to consider our own. This is the language of communication between the devil and the human. And this is the tool of manipulation, the most perfect tool of manipulation over each of us, don't you believe? Let's go back to the definition. What is manipulation? It's an attempt to impose on another person how they should act and how they should feel about something. All right. What? What a stupid? What a stupid kid? What a nerve your boss is nagging you about the one thing or another. They're not neighbors. Just a nightmare. It is. Isn't it manipulation that constantly echoes in our heads as a suggestion to evaluate another person's actions? And who determines for us? Who determines for us how we should feel about some person or some situation? The comments are playing in our head. Isn't why is the child stupid? He just doesn't want to solve this problem right now. Can't or doesn't want to. He did. Right, you know, it makes a difference when we realize that a child just can't solve a problem right now. Or just doesn't want to, that's a fact. But when this attitude is imposed, he is useless, he is stupid, he is irresponsible, he is born. So this is already a certain characteristic. Isn't like a glass at another person or a child. Isn't that how information is presented in the media? We are offered a description of some person or situation, but don't really know whether this person corresponds to this or not. Is this what really happened? It is the same manipulation that goes on in our heads all the time. Well, you know, it's a good accent. And thank you for talking it through. Why? Because really, you are getting at the primary reason why this happens. 
первичной причины. Why do we да, manipulate? Who in us seeks to manipulate? Because manipulation in one way or another leads to what? To one person dominating another person. And when you understand how it works in you, who is the main manipulator in you, who dominates in you, and most importantly, what he does it for, then you already look at the world in a completely different way. Then you realize that these techniques are everywhere, starting with the evaluation of some person, his actions, some phenomenon, event, situation, thing. And then you build up this chain of how to use it all to your advantage. I am now speaking in the way that the ordinary standard person thinks, who has no idea of his dual nature, for whom the question that the manipulator is inside, or rather the phrase that the manipulator, the main manipulator is inside, will cause a shock. What manipulator? You say, what am I inside? It's me, that's all. You come up, you look in the mirror, you wash your face, and that's it. And that's it. I'm not a manipulator, but when? Why have we analyzed these examples? Why did we start with them? So that each person looks honestly at his life and understands how he communicates, if not by flattery and resentment, then by such pseudo-care or accusation. That's all. There is no other. Well, that is… Again, what else is there? There is no love. And if there is love, then love is again dictated by whom? The same manipulator that is here? And what will he tell us about love? Love this one, because he is good. I don't know, they're beautiful, because it's profitable for me. And don't mess with that. Yes, because he is conditionally a moron, an idiot, a credit, well, or whatever it is. He parks the car incorrectly, so you don't need to talk to him at all, it's not a person. Well, I do not know, or the door slams hard when he enters the entrance. The elevator did not hold me four years ago. How can you talk to him about anything at all? It's a non-human, not like me. Here I am. Well done, star. That is, you know, people not paying attention to it, understand how relationships are built from a dominant position. I am the best, I am the smartest, the most correct, I park the car the best, I get into the elevator the quietest, and I don't make noise, my children don't stomp, or when cleaning something in the room, my vacuum cleaner is not as noisy as the neighbors. Here. And he is from this position, so he agreed with his consciousness, he came up with himself that he is better than all his neighbors in this entrance. And everything. Everyone owes him. They should not have money, they should obey him, and they should listen to him. And then the person wonders, where is manipulation in my life? I don't want anything from anyone at all. I disagree with comments that sound in my hand that treat people accordingly. Look how interesting it is. The commentator doesn't forget to remind you what happened four years ago, yes? Who looked at you, who slammed the door? For some reason, he forgets to remind what is really very important for, for a person here. By the way, good. People don't believe, people doubt that the main manipulator inside them. And how does the action of any person happen? Has anyone been watching this, trying to figure it out? Here is a man walking down the street, in a wood wood. Maybe he is walking, listening to music, some interesting program. Suddenly, a question arises in his head, or some kind of a memory. Out of a sudden, this issue needs to be resolved urgently. Headphones are turned off, and what starts running? Write a message and send a message on the phone, make a call, because there is an urgent need to solve some issue. By the way, about these urgent questions, well, yes, there are situations when you really need some kind of quick response, you need to soften people themselves when they consider uh, situations under the uh, heading urgent, that in fact, in often something that doesn't need to be done at all, or after all, there is an internet. Well, come on, look, search. If you suddenly have a question, why do people around have a fuss? 
But how does it usually happen? I send out the message and wait for everyone to respond urgently. And if they don't respond right away, what does it mean? Well, they treat me badly. This is the demonstration of the attitude towards me. This is the first thing that always comes to mind. It's how they, they don't consider me for anything at all or don't consider my opinion. An example of such urgent question like this, well, are you right? How are you? Where are you? Where are you? Yes. Okay, then, and you know, the answer is, I've got the five or six missed calls there. I already thought something had happened. Well, of course it happened. I haven't been able to reach you how I am. Where are you? How are you? Here is an example, you know, it's absurd. It's funny, but it happens all the time. And not just constantly, it happens in pattern. Or, you know, right away, if they didn't answer your message and finally someone picked up the phone, couldn't you pick up the phone? I'm all on the edge here. There is also an urgent need to solve this issue. And I already have a lot of things to do. Well, what do people have to do with it? That you're on the edge. And so it's your tips manipulator in your head that has determined for you how many things you have to do and how urgently they need to be solved. And you agree with that, agreed that you need to be nervous. Well, just you know about the answer to the phone. I remember the situation. You know, I've worked at a height in my life. And so, the person who has to insure you, suddenly, at this moment, his beloved wife calls him. He throws the safety rope, takes out the phone, he stands on the ground and begins to answer. To be honest, I didn't understand what was so important, what was the urgency, why can't he wait 10, 15, 20 minutes? Well, because really, the question is banal. Well, how are you doing there? What have you eaten? I got you something there this morning. Have you seen? Everything is fine, let's meet tonight. I didn't understand what it was, but I just witnessed a couple of times what happens when one's husband does not answer the phone and he comes home in the evening? And it's the same manipulation. But this is also an example of this concern. What was important in this phone call, like finding out that your husband is at work? Or just to remind you of yourself? I think about you all the time. Is that why you owe me? By the way, this is also a key point. Because love, don't think. Love is just there. And by the way, it feels when you really need to call to do or to say something. It is unobtrusive. That's what I'd say. And this is, I think about you, it means I care about you. This caring, manipulation. And so, Sasha, you made a very good accent here. When we send out urgent requests, responses, we urgently call persistently. And we don't know what this person is doing in the moment. What is his condition? What is he doing? Consciousness suggests one an ambiguous options at once. He doesn't want to answer you, he doesn't care about you. And I know from my experience that often when I call someone, just not persistently, there was even a call and the person didn't answer during the day, then it turned out that he was really very busy and really did something important. I think, thank God he didn't answer. It wasn't awkward that I tried to distract him somehow. Well, it's clear that there was a question, and still is. There, that therefore, you know, it is interesting that this manipulator and prompter always knows exactly when to try to distract someone. Tell me, a pattern situation that everyone has in life, one parents with children, that's for sure. You call mom, mom doesn't pick up the phone. Mom is already an elderly person. You think, God, is she okay? 20 minutes passed, mom calls back. I say, Mom, why didn't you pick up the phone? Mom answers. So you're like a sniper, as always. You just went into the bathroom and then 
uh, you call. This is a funny situation, laughter is laughter, but it's like someone specifically tells you to call at the moment, either when a person went to bathroom or when a person is really busy with something very important. This is another question that many people have been asking for a long time, that nothing happens just like that in this life. Yes, where did all these schemes come from? Understanding that something will happen at this moment, or you got a call at the most inconvenient moment, something is being demanded from you at the most inappropriate moment for you. These are indirect signs that this world is manageable. And when we really understand, here I come back to the question of the dual nature of man. When we understand that the man himself is manipulated, that is, the personality is manipulated by consciousness. Again, why is it manipulated? Because it is addicted. It doesn't know who it is. It doesn't know how it interacts with this world. It does not know what functions consciousness has. It does not know its functions. It does not know its purpose. Well, let's start with the most important thing. She doesn't know who is she. And that is, every person does not know who he is. And therefore, naturally, he has so many questions and perplexities. He blames it on some kind of mysticism, on coincidences, well, on everyday life. Well, that's always been the case. That's just how it happens for some reason. But if you really start to understand yourself, first of all, that is, it is not necessary to go there into the laws of the universe or delve into quantum physics. Just sort yourself out from the point of view of the dual nature of man, from the point of view of the primordial knowledge set forth in the book Alatra and other books by Anastasia Novich, broadcast with Igor Mihailovich, and you will find a lot of answers to your eternal questions and difficult, that's fine. And then the question of manipulation will become extremely obvious and simple for you, and you will understand that, in fact, it is solely a matter of your choice, only yours. Here, this is the answer to the question of how to get rid of manipulation. How can I not manipulate? Uh, how should I stop manipulating? And how can I not? And how can I not be manipulated? Indeed, you just need to understand that. First of all, you said correctly that to really nature you true essence in general to understand who am I, then it will become clear that manipulation begins with a substitution of understanding who am I as a human being, as soon as a person agrees that a thought in his head is his thought, then he and his intellect are one and the same thing, that's it, he is in trouble, he got into the hands of the most skillful manipulator called consciousness. In order to get rid away from this power, from the control and power of this manipulator, you need to answer the question, who am I? And to understand that thoughts in your head and consciousness are not you. Only when separated from it, a person is able to get rid of manipulation and to stop manipulating another person. Why? Because consciousness cannot communicate with a human personally in any other way. The very communication with the personality is based on deception, on the substitution of this understanding when the consciousness deceives the personality, saying, you are me. It's okay, we are together. And if it ceases to support this illusion, this deception will simply lose power over the personality. And having lost power over personality, it would lose in fact the main thing, why it haunts, the energy, thanks to which it exists, and that's it. And when you understand this, then everything really falls into place. A person who understands that he is a personality, that consciousness is not a tool that is a tool that tries to control him, a tool in the hands of the devil. Only such a person is able not to manipulate and not to be manipulated. Why? Because he is able to observe thoughts and choose which thoughts to support or not, whether to do something or not. And then he will not agree with the uh, thoughts of evaluation. Actually, this thoughts of evaluation is already the beginning of manipulation. The person agrees with that, with a suggestion of consciousness. 
This person is bad. Why he is bad? He is saying right now, that's it. I don't agree to stick to this label on the person, that's it. And the, the manipulation didn't pass. The person remained with his opinion and understand of how to perceive someone and how to treat something. Therefore, if you really want to get manipulation, then you need to study yourself, your own nature. Search for the right answer question. Who am I? And who is the real manipulator? Who really creates problems in our lives? In order to get away from manipulation, in order not to manipulate other people, you need to understand that everyone has the right of choice. That is what we discussed at the very beginning. Each person is able to understand and decide independently how to see, how to treat anything, how to act. But only a person who is free from the conscious can respect the right of choice. This is also needs to be understood. What does modern psychology, with all its trends, give us today? You know, with this mentoring, coaching and mastering some skills, it teaches us how to manipulate another person better, right? How to master those skills that will allow you to influence another person more subtly in order to fulfill your desires. Or does it teach you how to defend yourself from another person's manipulation? That's a kind of ping-pong, right? That is, here you are manipulating, here you are defending yourself to be manipulated. Well, really, this is true freedom, that you have simply become inaccessible. Inaccessible to manipulation not by other people, but primarily by your own consciousness. It really comes with the moment when you begin to know yourself, when you self-identify and do not falsely self-identify, that you are some kind of individual, you perform some kind of social role and the like. When you specifically understand that you are a person, that you are potentially living spiritual being, and when you understand the relationships within you, and naturally, based on it, you build completely different relationships with people in this world. And that's why I think that our conversations with you are unique. Why? Because they give every person an opportunity, really from a different point of view, from a different angle, to look at their problems and their everyday life and really find those answers and find that freedom that everyone is really looking for. Everyone. Knowledge is unique, Sasha. The knowledge from which we consider any situation is really unique, is the truth that allows a person to understand the essence of what is happening to him. Because if we talk about the methods that today's psychology offers, people are trying, uh, really studying the types of manipulations, they are trying to build action. Who is trying to build? They continue to be involved in those manipulations that build their own consciousness. That is, nothing changes, in fact. I just know that people have been trying for years, and specialists have been trying for years to learn all kinds of manipulation. They are trying to become more virtuous than the ones who manipulates them and creates these manipulations. It is impossible, and that's why they lose every time. But at the same time, they spend a lot of time and effort. But in fact, consciousness played by a person is still playing. Therefore, people study and continue to study, and it's endless research. Well, how it is how to get out? I already know so much, and still I fall on this trick. This fall for this hook every time. Diana, thank you very much for the conversation, for answering questions, for analyzing life and familiar situations to everyone. Friends, if you still have any questions, 
suggestions, please write in the comments. We will be happy to disclose all this with Diana. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so as not to miss new videos. Thank you very much and all the best! And just look, friends, we have now analyzed literally a little bit. But this little bit makes up our entire life. How much time we spend, how much of our attention we spend, really spend on illusions in our heads, on thoughts that have nothing to do with our real life, even in this three-dimensionality. How much energy and emotion we spend on worrying about empty things, don't we? Which have actually nothing to do with us and do not affect our lives in any way. A simple question. If you are not a bookmaker, if you do not own a soccer team and do not sell soccer memorabilia, how can those worries about whether the team has won or not influence you? In no way. Will that bring you profit? No. Your mood? Well, it can affect your mood. If you are already involved in this process, it can give you a false illusion that everything is fine. We have won. We have won. Friend of mine, what does it have to do with you? Just the fact that you were sitting somewhere and feeding someone with God knows what, with your own life. You are involved in this simply by compulsion, not at your own will. And what do you have to do with it, in fact? What did you get of it? Nothing. Except that you financed God knows whom and God knows why. Isn't that so? Is it manipulation? It is. How much time and energy did you spend? Yet, if we take the spiritual aspect, were you thinking about God at that time? Did you feel Him? Were you with Him? No. And who were you with? You weren't even with the devil. You were under His heel. He was doing to you what He wanted. This is exactly what I said. He was playing with the carrion like jackals do. Why? Because that's how consciousness manipulates us. It foists a thought and begets a desire. It manipulates us the way it wants and thus takes away our lives. We waste so much effort, time and life on that. Is it worth pondering over? It is. In such conditions of slavery and I would say, not even slavery, you know, it is hopelessness. In this hopelessness, can you gain freedom and life? You can, if you want to. That's the right thing to do. A human must not be a slave of Satan. He mustn't be anyone's slave at all. Then it is right. A human must be free. Tell me, is an angel anyone's slave? No, it's a free unit of the infinite world. That's exactly how we should learn. We should learn to rid ourselves. We should learn, let's say, to be human beings and not slaves. Everything is very simple. There is something to think about. Again, all this has been well studied scientifically. You see, it's not just somebody's fantasy. It wasn't invented by me and Tatiana. We simply talk about the facts that have been known for a long time and just call things by their proper names. Meanwhile, this is what you, friends, live by every day, don't you? Unfortunately, you do. Therefore, the simplest thing, say, what a person should start with. Friends, you know, you should start with love. Love overcomes everything. Let's just start loving each other. And stop being a carrion in someone's rotten teeth. Right? That's right. Thank you, friends, for being with us. Thank you. Let's just love each other.